Voice leading is a simple concept that has massive and complex outcomes. Whenever you run into a situation like this, where you've got a simple idea that leads to a broad result, it's always beneficial to have a familiar and practical example to use as a guidepost. Welcome back to the channel, my name's Chris. Today you will learn Pachelbel's Canon as an example of voice leading. I've tabbed this lesson out, that's on Patreon, as are tabs for every single video on this channel. Head on over there if you want to grab the tabs, and Patreon is also a gateway to my learning platform called The Studio. And in The Studio, I post exclusive content like videos, there are assignments, quizzes, there's a monthly live Q&A session. The Studio is also the gateway to my live courses, so that's me teaching a bunch of students all this kind of stuff. So if you're interested in what I'm doing and you'd like some more, Patreon is definitely the way to go. And if you do decide to support the channel, I thank you in advance. Let's get to business. What is voice leading? Why is it a simple concept with a complex outcome? I'll tell you why. Voice leading simply is the idea that any musical voice, a note, a note inside a chord, a melody, leads to another note, right? So everything you've ever heard is an example of voice leading, which is why those outcomes are so massive, right? But the idea about voice leading and how to really get to that concept, that initial concept of how it works, requires some sort of practice where you have to take a practical example, tear it apart, and see the voice leading actually happening. Then it galvanizes and you totally get it. I chose Pachelbel's Canon for a number of reasons. Number one is Pachelbel composed this in 1700. So the tune and the sound of this uh, progression has been in our subconscious for centuries. So it's very, very familiar. I would, I would uh, uh, argue that you probably haven't met a person who has not heard this. Uh, and it's much more likely that people have heard this so many times, it's instantly familiar. Uh, another reason why I chose this is because it's a very, very simple song. And all of the chords and all of the melody are diatonic, meaning that all the information is from one key. So cognitively, there's not a big load. As the, as the melody plays out and as the chord progression series um, repeats itself, there's not a large cognitive load. It's all in the key of D. It's very, very simple to understand and see. Uh, and then finally, the initial melody is a very, very beautifully simple example of voice leading. And it's so obvious and so clear that once you see it, the idea of voice leading really can click in. This is where having that familiar and practical example can really galvanize a subject for you. Uh, okay, we're going to zoom in. I'm going to show you the chord progression. I'm going to play you the melody. Then I'm going to show you how those two things actually add up into this great example of voice leading. And then just by switching up a couple of constraints, we're going to shift the voice leading and create something absolutely brand new from this very, very familiar practical example. Let's zoom in and I'll show you how it works. Okay, Pachelbel's Canon as an example of voice leading. First thing we got to uh, uncover is that chord progression. Now, uh, in the backing track of the chord progression I played at the top, um, I use these bar chords. The, the chord progression is D, A, B minor, F sharp minor, G, D, G, to A. 
the Nashville numbering system, this chord progression is one, five, six, three, four, one, four, five. So it's all diatonic, it's all in one key, which makes it very, very easy to follow. We don't have a lot of cognitive load with key changes and scale changes, none of that's going on. So the melody for this song, um, at least the initial part of the canon, um, is, is this simple descending line, which starts on F sharp. Now it's a simple descending line. I've got the whole thing here on the G string. Um, if we were to try to keep track of this line as just fret numbers or whole steps, it'd be a bit of a cognitive load, right? Whole step, whole step, whole half step, whole step, whole step, whole step up, and another whole step up. Like there's a lot of information going on there. But if I turn that chord progression into triads and start up here, I'm just gonna put the triads on the D, G, and B string melody is going to be on the G string, just descending. Watch how it sits inside these triads. Here's D, A, B minor, F sharp minor, G, D, G, back to A. So the melody sits inside the chords and this voice leads through the chords. In other words, here it's the third. Of the A chord, it's the fifth. When we go to the B minor, it's the minor third of that chord. When we go to the F sharp, it's the fifth. When we go to the G, it's the third. Down to the D, it's the fifth. Back to the G third and then it ends as the third of the A. So as you can see this voice is leading down right and as a linear line it doesn't look related to anything especially if we're playing these bar chords. Right? They don't look related but when you turn it into triads very, very obvious how it sits inside these chords. That's a perfect example of voice leading. Now voice leading, one of the aspects of voice leading is that there are some rules to it. And you know, with music theory, all rules can be broken. But one of the rules in voice leading is always move to the closest possible note. So as you can see, this, this melody is moving very, very short distances, right? We're gonna do a little experiment. We're gonna put the melody in this, um, in the chords again, but we're gonna add one more constraint, and that is every single melody note that changes, we want it to go up in pitch. So we're gonna start down here low on the neck, and we're gonna put a new melody on the G string. Here's our D chord, right? Now watch what happens. I'm gonna keep the melody on the D string. I'm changing it completely, and the, and the um, constraint is, Always move to the next closest note in the chord, like lead to the next voice, and only ascend. That's my new constraint. Now the melody has completely changed, but as a canon, and canon means basically the melody is iterated on through the piece. In other words, the piece cycles over and over again. The melody repeats and imitates itself. As the rule of a canon and voice leading, that melody works perfectly, right? And it voice leads through the chords just like the original does. But we're just using a couple of rules. Always move to the next closest note and only ascend. So interesting that this chord progression has held up since the 1700s as a, a bed and a beautiful example of how voice leading works. And you can do this type of thing with any one of the notes in the chord. You can do it on the B string, on the D string. You should experiment with this.
Take this chord progression, put it onto triads, come up with your own constraints, and invent your own voice leading solutions to this classic chord progression. Okay, there it is, Paco Bell's Canon, a very, very beautiful example of voice leading. It's in one key, the melody follows those chord tones beautifully, right? It's very, very simple to see inside that example. And then we saw how just changing a constraint and saying we only want to ascend with the melody brought us something totally new and gave us a completely new outcome, but still followed the laws of voice leading. I hope that if you've been confused about voice leading, this video has helped. And I hope it's raised some new questions for you because that's really the cycle you want to be in. Why? How does this work for the guitar? Why is it like this? Right? Keep asking those questions. Remain curious. Right? I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.